Hey guys, Chuck Burns for the USA here, and um, I have something to bring to you, um, and it's pretty, um, I think, important to say the least. I mean, this is so ridiculous and so far out there that only our government, only the corrupt people who run our country could actually think of something so s twisted and backwards to try to scam us on. I mean, they assessing Russian activities and intentions in recent U.S. elections, basically the Russian, Russian hack, you know? and. This is craziness, okay? Because there, there, was, there was no Russian hack, and even if there was, what were we mad about? Them exposing information that was correct? I mean, transparency, you know? I mean, ridiculous stuff. But before we go into the whole Russian report, let's take a little side journey here. Give it some, give us some context on this whole thing, all right? Such as, not let's show you that last year in a second, but the Georgia confirms Homeland Security attempted to hack election database ten separate times. And then Washington Times. Well, the first one was Zero Hedge article. This is Washington Times article. Georgia election accuse, officials accused DHS of hacking state computer system. Now you get that? Our DHS, who's accusing the Russians of hacking us, is actually hacking our election, not them. And it's retarded. I'm going to show you a video real quick here, some portions of it, about... Georgia and um, there's some other states they mentioned in there too who all had the same IP addresses that all traced to DHS hack their system. Check it out. Good evening. I'm Justin Farm. I'm Jovita Moore. We broke news on Twitter today that Kentucky and West Virginia trace possible cyber attacks to the same U.S. Department of Homeland Security IP address found in a similar attempt in Georgia. Channel 2's investigative reporter Aaron Diamond talked exclusively with Georgia's Secretary of State who is very concerned. Aaron joins us now live from Midtown Atlanta. Aaron. Jovita, secretaries of state offices run state election systems, and as the scope of this story grows, so does the number of questions, a lot of red flags that remain unresolved. We need somebody to dig down into this story and figure out exactly what, ha what happened. Another demand for answers from Georgia Secretary of State Brian Kemp to the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. On Thursday, we confirmed election agencies in West Virginia and Kentucky have also traced suspected cyber attacks on its networks in November to the same DHS IP address Kemp's office already linked to a massive, unauthorized vulnerability scan of his agency's firewall that same month. So now this just raises more questions that haven't been answered about this and uh, continues to raise the alarms and the concern that I have. Through an open records request, we got a hold of the results of a survey Kemp asked the National Association of Secretaries of State send to its members. West Virginia wrote back, this IP address did access our election night results on November 7th, 2016. Kentucky responded, the same IP address did touch the Kentucky online voter registration system on one occasion. November 1st, 2016. In a letter this week, DHS Secretary Jay Johnson told Kemp the department sourced the mid-November activity in Georgia to a federal contractor conducting what he called normal internet searches on the Secretary of State's website. The problem for Kemp... We haven't been able to recreate this the way they've explained it to us. And Kemp told us DHS has yet to explain at least nine other suspected network scans linked to DHS IP address over the last year on or around important projects primary and presidential election dates in Georgia. Kemp's call for answers amplified now by the National Association of Secretaries of State. The main challenge. We have uh, one administration leaving town and another coming in. And so it does remain to be seen just who will be left holding the bag if we don't get a great explanation on what has occurred very soon. Now you've watched that, now check this out. In stunning last minute power grab, Obama designates election systems as critical infrastructure. So you like that? I mean, they're basically saying, okay, that now that these are critical infrastructure, so DHS now will be in charge of them, you know, and all their systems to manage election processes, you know, so pretty much everything it says right here in the screen, right here. I mean, voter tabulation centers, voter machines, polling places, blah, 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 blah. I mean, wow. The people who hacked our own election, not the Russians, the DHS, are now going to be in charge of the system. That's not asking for trouble. That's so. That's just a smart idea. We should give these, these, um, these assholes complete control of it. But so now that we have the context for this whole thing, and the reality of it, I mean... It's, it's, and it's ridiculous to me, because you have to remember, I mean, 
There is so much fraud here that's already going on. That's all we need is a DHS in control of it. I mean, just remember Jill Stein right here is recount, right? And that she called for and didn't get the errors she wanted. But what we did find is that the demanding investigation the Republican leaders are demanding one to determine why the third of the city's voting machines registered more ballots than actual voters. Holy crap. All right. So now let's go back to the report now, okay? Let's come back over here to Adobe and let's check it out, all right? Now they go down here, they got this page, intentionally left blank, you know, it's official report. Reported to classified version, blah, 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 highly classified assessment, making you again think that they're showing you something you never should see with all this extra gnarly proof. But that's not really the reality of it, okay? So scoping and sourcing, this is just kind of like a little thing, a prefunctory thing. But right here, here we go, let's dive into it, okay? Assessing Russian activities and intentions, all right? Now, I want you to get this, all right? This is the biggest thing that right in the beginning that shows you this is a biased report. The U.S.-led liberal democratic order is what they are trying to do what with? Moscow's long-standing desire to undermine the U.S.-led liberal democratic order. Yes, the liberal agenda, the Hillary Clinton, the Obama agenda. When they say U.S.-led, you know what they mean. They're meaning the Obama administration, the U.S.-led liberal, not you and me, the Obama administration. That's what they're talking about. Not you and me. I mean, <clears throat> and I want you to also pay attention as we go down here. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but we assess President Vladimir Putin, blah, blah, blah. We, assess, we also assess. We also assess. I mean, what the hell is that supposed to mean? <clears throat> I'm going to go to the very end of the article real quick because <clears throat> I'm going to show you something. At the very end of the article, they have this whole scale about what their words mean when they say something. Okay? See this right here? If it's unlikely, no remote, almost no chance, you know? High prob highly, impro highly, high, highly pro improbable, very unlikely. And this is like the certain the scales to the, the truth. It's like zero percent possibly true and a hundred percent true. You know, almost certainly, nearly certain. Nowhere on the scale do they have the two words "we assess" anywhere on that scale. Nowhere, they don't have "we assess" anywhere, which is kind of weird because you would think that since it's so certain, they would use the terminology. It is highly probable, or like a more remote, below. they would say use some of those words, but they don't. Okay, so um, so they so they are saying that we they assess that Russia was involved in influencing our election. If Moscow's influence campaign followed a Russian message strategy that blends covert intelligence operations such as cyber activity with over with over efforts from the Russian government agencies, state-funded media, third-party intermediaries, and paid social media users or trolls. That sounds like COINTEL pros in our government, doesn't it? It sounds like the people that they, our government pays to all the trolls we see out there. They're on the, from media matters, from the, from, you even know from the CIA and the FBI, you know they pay people to do this. We know they do. It's provable. So it, 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 they're accusing basically the Russian media of doing what they already do and is not illegal. And you know what? This is, in no way is any of that hacking. Okay? No way is any of that hacking. So we assess with high confidence. Again, da, 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 they're high confidence. They finally use a word that we saw on the scale in the end. And then they're talking here about with the DC leaks and the, G, the GRU and Goose for 2.0 persona. DC leaks released US victim data obtained in cyber operations publicly and exclusive to media and exclusive to media outlets and related material to WikiLeaks. But the problem is Julian Assange has come out and said that the DC insider is somebody from the Democratic Party that was upset about the Bernie Sanders whole affair that they railroaded him. Not that this came from the Russians. He's already spoken on this. So what are we, what, what is this that we see? WikiLeaks, I mean, guy from the Russians? No, Assange denounces that and says prove that to be true. There's no proof of that because it didn't happen. So, I don't know, he sounds pretty certain to me. I mean, really certain. I mean, really, really certain. Russian intelligence obtained and maintained access to elements of multiple U.S. state or local electoral boards. DHS assesses the type of systems Russian actors targeted or compromised were not involved in vote tallying. So they didn't hack our election and they did nothing of any consequence to it. How would, they, how would their being involved in electoral boards affect the vote, actually, in the way it's counted? I mean, really? What are we... What, I mean, what kind of benign... Ben, like just banter is this bullshit. I mean, what, where are the where are they where's the corruption and the government hack from the Russians? I mean, I don't see it yet. 
And I, I read the whole thing. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's, it's retarded. See, there's more fucking wasted pages. There are three right there. So let's go down here. So, again, we see. In, in trying to influence U.S. election, we assess the Kremlin sought to advance its long-standing desire to undermine the U.S.-led liberal, liberal democratic order, the promotion of which Putin and other senior Russian leaders view as a threat to Russia and Putin's regime. Well, why? Because Hillary would start World War III. That seems like a fairly justifiable thing to be afraid of, you know? So, God, you know, God, bah, damn them for having their self-interest at heart, you know? I mean, nobody should ever do that. We assess Putin and his advisors in the Russian government developed a clear preference for President-elect Trump over Secretary Clinton. Again, why? Because Hillary would start World War III. She was going to go no-fly zones over Syria, directly con confronting them by just the circumstances you would have to be confronting like Russian fighter jets who are you know, helping Assad out and carving out the airspace, trying to fight these fucking terrorists. I mean, seriously? Yeah, duh. Of course you'd have a preference for fucking Trump over Hillary. I mean, what, are you kidding me? Who wouldn't in that case? Nonetheless, Putin publicly indicates a uh, preference for President-elect Trump's stated policy to work with Russia. But that doesn't make sense, right? I mean, his stated policy wants to work with Russia instead of go to World War III with him? Of course you have preference for that. I mean, gosh. It's, it's, a, it's like... <laughs> it's like they're, they're, they're arguing that we somebody shouldn't have their own self-interest at heart. It's like, what kind of retarded idiots write this shit? Moscow also saw the election of President-elect Trump as a way to achieve an, an international counterterrorism coalition against the Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant. ISIL. Okay, yeah. Because guess what? That would be awesome instead of us keep funding them and like, you know, basically we, we, we started ISIS. I mean, that was our doing. They were the Syrian rebels that we gave guns to. And they became the jihadist ISIS, you know, or group ISIS. We began this thing, and, you know, it'd be nice, he's thinking, if we would help stop it and actually put it back in its box, and close Pandora's box. Who wouldn't want that? So, yeah, I mean, it's like, you're so, so, so it's like they're amazing arguments that are so, like, so stupid, because it's like, they're saying, because somebody is working and wants something that's in their best self-interest, they're against us, and they're bad. It's, come on, please. Alright, let's see what I got here. Russian community. As such as cyber activity with over or efforts by Russian government agencies, state funded media, third party intermediaries, and paid social media users or trolls. Just like our government already does. Oh man, it's like none of it hacking and none of it illegal. Okay. Moscow campaign aimed at US election reflected years of investments capabilities in which Moscow had honed in the former Soviet states. Oh no. <laughs> Just just fear mongering, you know. Just uh, it's like I mean, it just it just overly stating. Just of course, yeah. They the, everybody builds capabilities, you know, and they create new technology and this and the race we had for weapons and stuff. And so, yeah, maybe they hone some things. But guess what? That's kind of just happened. We did too. It's so what? Okay, the Kremlin's campaign aimed at the U.S. election future featured disclose, disclosures of data obtained through Russian cyber operations, intrusions into U.S. state and local electoral boards. Okay, what would an electoral board? disclose that could help them somebody just put me straight in this one what, what, what would it be I can't think of anything can you I mean overt propaganda all right <laughs> again you can say people can say whatever they want it's like they're arguing for against free speech I mean you're the Russians I mean what are they saying the Russians can't say whatever they want so it's propaganda that that, that, that makes them makes us them somebody who should be silenced I mean that's not how free speech works I'm sorry it's, it's retarded um, in July 2015 Russian intelligence gained access to Democratic National Committee DNC networks and maintained access till at least June 2016 okay prove it um, I mean honestly and even if they did guess what Assange said that those leaks were not what from the Russians and he can actually prove it, and he's asking them to prove. Anybody who wants to say that they were given to him by the Russians to prove it, and they, they're not doing it. I mean, if he can prove it, and they were not going to prove it, then I trust him. Sorry, that's just how that goes. Now we scroll down a little farther, and press reporting suggests that more than one person claiming to be Goosefer 2.0 interacted with journalists. Okay, the, you know what? 
how do they how no movies are made goose for how do they know this they're not, if it's a different phone number it's not him calling from a different phone how do they know any of this how do they know he's in how many emails he has so you know what that's an erroneous claim i mean there's no there's nobody who claims to know that so that's horseshit now this is important right here and this is this is funny because we assess with high confidence the GRU related material acquired from the DNC and the senior Democratic officials to WikiLeaks. Moscow most likely chose WikiLeaks because of its self proclaimed reputation for authenticity. Disclosure from through WikiLeaks did not contain any evident forgeries. Okay. So what they're saying here is that everything that was disclosed was true. Again, so we're mad about them giving us transparency in our election and our officials that are running for office. Do you mean, isn't that what we want, more transparency? But yet, they're basically saying that everything's true. We're just mad that they told you. Bah, sheep, bah. Just keep your head down. Don't read any of the information. Don't look at the transparency. Because guess what? We don't want you to be able to actually wake up and see what this country is doing, what our government is doing, and all the people pulling the strings in your life. Just, bah, sheep, just ignore this. Bah, just keep going right fucking by it. It's true, but just ignore it. I mean, seriously. Bah. In early September, Putin said publicly it was important to the D- important to the DNC data was exposed to WikiLeaks, calling the search for the source of the leaks as a distraction and denying Russian state-level involvement. So he's saying we didn't do it. And he's saying that's a distraction to try to put it on us because... Guess what? We didn't do it, and now you know information about your officials that you might want to know? So, why don't you pay attention to that? How is that evidence that they... How is that even malicious? That's like him saying, be rationally self-interested in America, and our government saying, don't do that. Don't be rationally self No, ignore the facts. Look at him, he, he's trying to corrupt our election process doesn't make any sense it, it just it, 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 I can't even believe that they call this a report that has any kind of like actual weight or meaning Assange sympathetic coverage provides him a platform to denounce the United States he's never denounced the United States what he says is we have a government that's often corrupt and we need to be more transparent and he's there to help with that process and other countries he's doing that he wants to do the same thing too and he's never only picking us they release plenty of stuff about other people too. I mean, I mean, jeez. I mean, it's like <laughs> that's a blatant lie. I mean, here's another one. Russia collected on some Republican affiliated targets, but did not conduct a comparable disclosure campaign. Okay. The, the thing is, that right there. If it was Russia, you'd think they'd be maybe a little bit more with giving of both information both sides but i mean the problem is that these leaks all came from a democrat who's disenfranchised because of the bernie the whole bernie sanders scandal and he was cheated out of the primary and that's why there's only these dnc links because that's what happened doesn't it make sense we have a disenfranchised bernie voter because they cheat and fuck their primary own primary over and, and rigged it and that's why all these information pieces all this, this, these leaks are coming from the dnc because that's the people person who leaked it was a disenfranchised Bernie voter. It makes perfect sense. But somehow, I mean, I think that's just thrown in there to say, well, no, other people were hacked. Show me proof. Show me proof of that. Show me proof that the RNC and other some our Republican organizations were hacked. Prove it to me. Prove it to me. Prove it to me. Prove it to me. <coughs> DHS act assesses that the type of systems we observed Russian actors targeting or compromising are not involved in vote tallying. So again, they're saying we had they had if they did hack something it wasn't and that's even if they, if they even did it wasn't anything that mattered so we're mad about what again why are we mad i don't know state owned russian media made increasingly favorable comments about president elect trump oh because he's got their best interest and he does not going to start world war 3 again how is this bad starting in march 2016 russian government linked actors began openly supporting President like Trump's candidacy in media. Yeah, because again, it's in their country's best interest. How is that bad? Russian media hailed President elect Trump's victory as a vindication of Putin's advocacy for global populist movements, the theme of Putin's annual conference for Western academics in October 2016, and the latest example of Western liberalism's collapse. And he doesn't mean classical liberalism, he means modern progressive liberalism, I'm sure. 
but you know, and the populist thing, and that's just their Russian perspective on things because they're a bunch of, you know, they're really kind of got the whole group mentality going on still, and they're trying to work their way out of it, and it's kind of still sticking around. So <clears throat> that's what that, that language right there is, but you know, it is, but it is a victory for Russia, and it is a victory for us, I hope, as long as Trump keeps up his end of the bargain, does what he says he's going to do. So let's see. Let's watch him. <clears throat> no. Cast Trump, President, Pres, President-elect Trump is an outsider victimized by a corrupt political establishment. Okay, so yeah, the propagandist Dmitry da, 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 was flagship. Really. This felt to cast President Trump as an outsider victimized by a corrupt political establishment. Absolutely, that's what, exactly what happened. I mean, look at what they did. They they thought he would lose, and so they pushed him in the beginning, and then after they pushed him to get there because they thought he would lose, they fucking slammed him. Yeah, there's complete corruption. It's like, it's like, oh yeah, the meanwhile, Trump would be the best choice. Oh, wait, no, oh, man, he's an evil man, blah, 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 blah. It's like, come on, that's so two-sided and two-faced, it's obvious. It's retarded. I mean, I don't know who they expect to believe the way they, they're, 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 they're talking and their logic, but it's kind of crazy. Coverage of Secretary Clinton throughout the U.S. presidential campaign was consistently negative and focused on her leaked emails and accused her of corruption, poor physical health and mental health, and ties to Islamic extremism. Because that's all true. That's why they did it, because it's all true. All right, they leaked emails that were really her emails that were they've said in the same report that they weren't forgeries, they're real. Okay, is there map transparency? Okay, accused her of corruption. Yeah, I mean they're way corrupt. Look at Haiti; they, they took hundreds of millions of dollars, and how much made it back to the country? Less than fifty million. The okay, poor physical health. Yeah, she's got she's in bad health. She could have Parkinson's. I don't know. There's people who have made some good arguments for that the fact that she has Parkinson's. I mean, either way, she's not in good health. I mean, she's had a series of problems in her and while she's been in D.C. in certain positions throughout the years. And this is just a, another culmination of them. <clears throat> Those health problems that we're seeing during this, and we don't need that for our president. Somebody with that many problems? I mean, seriously. Now, <clears throat> in ties to Islamic extremism, yeah, she took tons of money from the Saudi government. Tons of money. Yeah, okay, so these, are, these things are all true. I mean, so, yeah, we're getting mad that they, they put true things on the air. That's fucking so dumb. On August 6th, uh, on 6th of August, RT published an English language video called Julian Assange Special. Do WikiLeaks have the emails that'll put Clinton in prison? Exclusive interview with Assange Insa- with Insa- entitled Clinton and ISIS Funded by Same Money. RT's most popular video on Secretary Clinton. How 100% of Clinton charity went to themselves. Had more than 9 million views on social media. RT's post most popular English language video about the president elect called Trump will not be permitted to win. Features, featured Assange and had 22 and had 2.2 million views, right? What what are they what are they what are they saying? Okay, so people believe this stuff and they're looking at looking at different information online and they're coming to this and they're going, I want to see that because I already know that's going on and I want to find some more information out. And so it's getting hits because people are seeing validity in it. So where are we trying? Are you? It seems to me it's like where and you bring that up, it's like. Well, were you trying to support the fact that we didn't elect Hillary? Because I mean, that makes that's a going down that route is just a great group of evidence for why we made the right decision this election. You know, I mean, the, the likely financier of the so-called Internet Research Agency of Professional Trolls located in St. Petersburg is a close Putin ally with ties to Russian intelligence. Okay, there's nothing illegal about trolling, and you know what? If, if you want to believe a bunch of trolls, I mean. Nobody can help you because you're a lost fucking idiot that just takes the online bullies and online bullshit way too seriously. So, I mean, it's like, what are we, we? We troll. Our government trolls. We troll massively, actually, on people. We have paid, tons of paid people and many different agencies that do it. And they're paid to do that for a living. And what are we, we getting mad when somebody can say something we want them to say? Or, I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, it's like, yeah, they, they, we have trolls too, and they have trolls. It's fire with fire. That's all that is. I don't see the problem. And it doesn't change the election results at all. It's not anything that's going to change a vote once it's cast by the American person for their per- candidate of their choice. Okay. During the Cold War, Soviet Union used intelligence officers, influence agents, forgeries, and press placements to disparage candidates perceived as hostile to, Kreml- to the Kremlin, according to the former KGB activist. Okay, stating the obvious. Yeah, we know that any country that is against that has another foreign power will try to do things like that. And they did. That was during the Cold War. Not now. All right. 
and is boldest yet. I don't buy that. I don't buy that it was even close to bold. I mean, they even done nothing that actually would change a vote. How is that bold? Putin's public views of the disclosure suggest the Kremlin and the intelligence services will continue to consider using cyber-enabled disclosure operations because of their belief that these can comp accomplish Russian goals and relatively easily without significant damage to Russian interests. Yeah, because guess what? They're not really doing anything wrong. So you can't, when you're not doing anything really wrong and you're being transparent, even if they were doing this, they mean, how can that damage your interests when you're actually just giving people true information? I mean, again, I don't know this whole report. I just kind of keep saying to myself, what are they trying to prove here? What exactly? Okay, here they talk about RT, Russia. Kremlin's TV seeks to influence politics, full discontent in the U.S. Fuel discontent, sorry. All right. So from August, November 20, 2012, RT ran numerous reports on alleged U.S. election fraud and voting machine vulnerabilities, contending that the U.S. election results cannot be trusted and not reflect the popular will. Well, we have a bunch of voting machines owned by George Soros that his company designed and made and have provably been hacked by people in the past. Granted, they're more, they've are more been made more secure and we don't necessarily know that any of that was happening on election day, but yeah, there's definitely a problem there. I mean, George Soros, he's the guy who owns the company who makes these things. That's a huge, huge problem. So that's a very safe point to make. And and advertised third-party candidate debates are this is what RT did and ran reporting ran reporting supportive of the political agenda of these candidates. The RT host asserted that the two-party system does not represent the views of at least one third of the population and is a sham. Okay, problem with that? I don't see one because it kind of is. And on top of that, too, giving the third-party candidates a, a debate time, we should be doing that already. The fact that we're not is fucking sad. All right. And we're gonna, they're gonna hold that against RT. That seems ridiculous to me. It's so ridiculous that it fucking hurts, All right? And then they say here, uh, RT frame movement as fight against the ruling class and describe the current U.S. political system as corrupt and dominated by corporations. It is. They're the ones who buy the influence from the politicians that peddle their peddle their power out to them, you know, to get them favors and get them contracts. Yeah, so that's correct. RT advertising for the documentary featured Occupy movements calls to take back the government. Yeah, we need to take back our government. Okay, again. Occupy was the wrong vehicle for that, but again, I don't really see the problem here. Okay, it's it's such it's, it's just I wonder what the whole time. What are they trying to prove? RT reports often characterize the United States as surveillance state. <laughs> Why? Because we are, and alleged widespread infringement of civil liberties, police brutality, and drone use. Well, that's all true, and um, it's like. Well, 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 again, what are you trying to say here, you know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Russian attacking report people who wrote this thing? What are you trying to say? What's what's the point of this? I mean, you're trying to say that um, we're a surveillance state because we are a surveillance state, and uh, that's somehow them not just telling the truth. I mean, we have a huge surveillance state problem, and they're 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 mad about this. Why? Why? What's the fucking point? I don't fucking understand. Now, RT is also focused on criticism of the U.S. economic system, U.S. currency policy, and alleged Wall Street greed, and the U.S. national debt. Some of RT's hosts have compared the United States to Imperial Rome, because we are Imperial Rome, and we have predicted the government corruption and the corporate greed will lead us to U.S. financial collapse. Because it probably will. I mean, we have the, the currency policy, the Federal Reserve. Everybody knows the Federal Reserve is a sham. Prints money of thin air, puts us in debt. We pay our, we have to pay interest on money that we are create our own money. I mean. Why do you have to pay yourself interest? Well, why? Because we don't actually own the Federal Reserve. And the, the fact that they've touched upon this is just them being more transparent than their own government, again, about something. And why is that a problem? Why is that a problem that people realize what's happening with our currency and the people who, who are doing it and why, why and how they're doing it? Why don't we try to understand that? Because I guarantee it would change if we could fix our currency or get rid of the Federal Reserve, it would change the world. But somehow pointing all these things out that we have too, our debt's too big, because it is, is a problem. You know, and RT shouldn't do that because, I mean, n nobody can do that. I mean, how dare you state the obvious facts, right? Okay, RT is leading media voice opposing Western intervention in Syrian conflict and blaming the West for waging information wars against the Syrian government. Yeah, because we did, because we, we tried to dethrone Assad. The, uh, Assad was the one, like, person in that area of the world who had like pretty much Muslims and Christians living next to each other side by side without any problems and somehow we're um we're we're we're, we're intervening as a we're in in, the, in there is um 
something that we shouldn't mention. Yeah, we, we were defaming a guy who actually has caught, had peace in the region. We're taking a we're taking a, a country with a bunch of jihadists in it. We're supporting the fucking jihadists as if they're the fucking rebels trying to free the fucking country when really all they've done is thrown it into civil war, destroyed millions of people's homes, displaced millions of people into Europe, and somehow, somehow, that's you know something that our intervention doing all that th- something is shouldn't be discouraged and should be like somehow they should stay out of our way no they should definitely be trying to stop us from that and we should stop our fucking selves because guess what it's fucking ridiculous all right it's fucking ridiculous according to the world propaganda every new kind okay this is um this is this is basically saying you know this is um Another more of a, you know, just um, I thought uh, I highlighted it because you know it's saying basically you know every country has propaganda. Everybody's t- TV stations are for their country's interest, you know, and so is the, the, the RT for Russia. I mean that makes perfect sense, and that's all that this this quote is basically stating, you know, and they, they're and they're catering to an alternative de- the demand for a demand for an alternative view of the world. Yeah, absolutely, because people in America are tired of the mainstream media because it's horseshit, because it's just a bunch of fucking people parroting the fucking same points given to them by the White House, Secretary, um, Secretary for the Press, you know what I mean, uh, Jake Carney, whoever the, whatever the guy's name is, and I forget his name, but I mean, there's parroting all these talking points, and yeah, we want an alternative view of the world besides the talking points, and if they're providing it, then they're providing it. Maybe if the government would um, let get its hands out of the fucking press, maybe we would get that from our own country instead of having to go to Russia for it. Jeez, McVasser McFall hints that our channel is interfer- is is inter is interference with U.S. domestic affairs, and we sinful souls, we were thinking that it's freedom of speech. Basically, saying what I said earlier that you know they're saying what they want to, they're free, they're 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 they should have. If we believe that freedom of speech is a universal value, then their press should be able to say what they want, and they're saying it, and now we're mad about it. Okay, that's retarded. So retarded. Okay, now here let's go on a little farther. All right. And they're they're trying to criticize this new um Sim, Simonian this um girl right here, who's the new leader of RT, but um, you know she was put in place because it sounds like the guy before it was a crap did a crap job you know, he would did um uh, shield her from other and other officials and their from their request to air certain reports you know, um, so yeah so she basically you know she wants to put all, uh, stuff on the air that other person didn't want to so she wants to put more information on the air what's wrong with that, don't see the problem how is that evidence somehow against the Russians. And then she's saying, I wish you could see how these guys are not just on air, but then they're on social networks, da, 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 how they defend the positions we stand on. She's basically saying these aren't just talking points. We actually believe what we're saying, you know, and, for, and as far as Russians, you know, so I mean, it's, it's, it seems so ridiculous to me. I mean, that like they're, they're, like, they're, they're speaking in their own best interest, and that's a problem. They're, um, uh, they believe what they're saying, and that's a problem. It's like, come on, we, we, I think we have a better world if people would actually stand up for what they, they believe in and believe what they're saying. I think a lot of people don't even buy their own bullshit these days. And they talk about social media, the RT focus on to build an audience, encourages social networking. Everybody does these days in America, and why shouldn't they do it to there? And in you know, Kingdom and uh, uh, United States, RT's most successful markets. I don't even doubt that for a second, considering you know the fact that we both have huge liberal progressive problems. United Kingdom and us, and people are want something that's a different source that's outside of that circle of bullshit. Surprise, surprise, right? Okay. No, I don't know why I highlighted that right there, but I mean, look at this. I mean, you gotta think. You know, people aren't people aren't stupid. They 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 like the information they hear. You know, and honestly, I have just made the point here. You know, the RT is kind of saying a lot of valid points. And look at they get their numbers are way up there in the hundreds of millions of views on YouTube, subscribers on YouTube way higher than CNN, BBC, Al Jazeera, right here. Um, Twitter followers, thousands of followers. Okay, I'm uh, CNN's got a beat right there, but that's a you know that's that's a Twitter's the dying thing anyway. Okay, Facebook likes and Facebook chatter. I mean. CNN, but that's just because um, the RT is suppressed by by Facebook, you know. I mean, and Twitter alike, you know. So that, that's not surprising. But if you look at YouTube, they the, when people get to just choose, and there's not the censoring of opinion like there is on those two other media sources. They, they, they're they're blowing everybody else out of the water. I mean, this is just a, this is just the craziness. I mean. We have to really consider what these sickos are doing. They're they're accusing the Russians of hacking our government. 
in our election system when our own government's hacking it and change trying to um, take control of it as critical infrastructure. Wake the fuck up. Don't be a sheep and go bam buy this shit. This is this is just, you know, it's this is a last minute power grab by by Obama. It's the it's our it's our it's them the Democrats, the liberal US led democratic order, you know, which they Russia's opposed to, and we should be too. Um Matt being getting mad that they lost, you know, to Donald J. Trump, who they find to be a clown, you know. But he's not. He's a successful man. He's made millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions. And you know what? He's smart, and he's going to try to maybe actually help this country out. And guess what? Because that happened, they're pissed, and they're just basically trying everything they can to just discredit him, to make it make a, it look like it's the Russians who hacked this, and all these different nutty things. It's despicable. All right, guys, this is Chuck Burns for the USA signing out for you tonight. Um, I'm going to leave a link to the document actually down below in the description, the actual one I showed you here that I highlighted. I'm also going to um, uh, leave links to all the, the articles I showed you too and the other video about the election of fraud in Georgia and um, Kentucky and Tennessee. So if you want to find any of that information, go ahead, look down below, click it, and it'll be there. And uh, you can do some more research yourself and follow your little path wherever down the rabbit hole it takes you. Have a good night, guys, and, um, you know, Share this with a friend. And uh, you're subscribing. Thanks for subscribing. And if you have not subscribed yet, subscribe. Why not? Hell, just do it now. Don't even think about it. Click the button. Why, why, are you, why haven't you clicked it yet? I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you to click it. So do it. I'm still waiting. So just kidding, guys. Have a good night.